Okay, the rational root theorem. This says that, you know, it looks a little confusing when you first look at it. It says you, you've got yourself a polynomial with integer coefficients. So real number integer coefficients. Then that polynomial might not have any rational roots. It might not have any roots that are can be written as a fraction of integers. But if it does have any rational roots, then all of them will have the form where the top is a factor of this guy, the constant term at the end, and your denominator is a factor of your leading coefficient. So the rational root theorem says, somebody hands you a polynomial with integer coefficients. You write down every possible factor of the, the constant term at the end, you write down every possible factor of the leading coefficient, you make all the possible fractions you can out of those two numbers where this guy's factors are on top, his are on the bottom. That gives you a big giant list of fractions. Then if you start checking all those fractions, if there are any fractions that make this function zero, they'll be in that list. So it doesn't guarantee that you'll be able to find roots. It guarantees that if there are any rational roots, they'll be in that list. Okay, so here, let's take a look. Here we got ourselves a polynomial. It's degree four, which means he'll have four roots. He'll have four linear factors, not necessarily distinct. He might not have any rational, like all of his roots might be like square root of seven, or three plus four i. He might have four complex roots. We don't know. But if there are any nice, pretty roots that can be written as just a fraction of integers, they'll be of the form where the fraction, the top is going to be one of his factors and the bottom will be one of his factors. So we list out all of the factors don't worry about the pluses and the minuses because factors can be positive or negative. So I don't care that that's a minus four. I'm just concerned with the four. All the factors of four are one, two, and four plus or minus. All the factors of two plus and minus one and two. So now I want to make every possible fraction I can where I list one of these numbers on top and one of these on the bottom. So you can see here, we get this big giant list. I could have four over two, four over one, plus or minus. Two over two, two over one. Well, now we just got a repeat. Four over two and two over one. Like you're going to get a lot of repeats. That's okay. We're not going to list them all separately. There's no point in listing four over two and two over one. That's two both ways. 1 over 2, 1 over 1, all plus or minus. So once we've reduced all those possibilities, that gives us this list. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8 possibilities. So then what we would do is start trying these. And obviously, I don't want to start by trying a half. That one's a pain. I don't want to plug a half in here and see if I get 0. I would start by plugging in 1. Because that one you can do in your head. That is, when I plug in x equals 1, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Plus 1 would be negative 2. Minus 4 would be what? Negative 6? Whatever it is, it's not 0. So positive 1 is not a root. Then maybe we would try negative 1 see if that works, and so forth. And we keep trying, and hopefully we find one that works. Once we find one that works, we factor it out using synthetic division or long division, and we reduce this down to a linear factor times a cubic, a third degree. And then we rinse and repeat until we get all of our factors. Okay, so here's another example. We've got this polynomial. If there are any rational roots to him, 
the top is going to be a factor of one. That's just plus and minus one. The bottom will be a factor of two, plus and minus two. So remember, this guy goes on top over this one. It's kind of counterintuitive. You wouldn't expect it to work that way, but it does. So the only fractions I can make there, plus or minus one and plus or minus a half. We've got four of them that might work. Again, it's possible none of them work. But we start plugging in. And you can see they've done the math for us. If we plug in a negative one, we don't get zero. He's out. If we plug in a positive one, we get zero. Good. Then what we would do is factor out x minus one. It's always x minus the root out of this guy and reduce it to a quadratic. And then we'd use quadratic formula to find the other two. So here's an example. It's kind of a boring one. Okay, so I'm going to use the same notation they do. P is the constant term, one. That's P. This is what we call Q, the coefficient there, one. So I want factors of P over factors of Q. So, all right, well, we've got to throw in pluses and minuses here. Plus or minus one, plus or minus one. Every possible fraction I can write here. So my possibles would just be plus or minus one. That's all I can write there. Let's see if any of those work. I would start with one. So when you're plugging in one, all you're really doing is adding all the coefficients because one to any power is just one. One minus five is negative four, negative two plus one. I think we get negative one. All right, one minus five. Yep, I think that's right. F of negative one. So I'm doing this by evaluation. We could also do this using synthetic division or long division. Now I'm going to replace all my x's with a negative one. So what's going to happen anytime you're plugging in negative one? You're going to do this a bunch. All of your even powers, the negative is going to disappear. Negative one squared is still just positive one. So I'm going to end up keeping the negative five. All of the odd powers, though, I'm going to have the same kind of thing here, but all of the odd powers are going to switch signs. The even powers will stay the same. The odd powers will switch. So negative one cubed is negative one. Minus five times positive one, because I'm squaring it, stays minus five. Two times negative one is negative two and then plus one. So look what happened here. These guys here had an odd exponent. They ended up switching signs from when I just plugged in one. Okay, now we just add all this up. So that's negative six, negative eight, plus one, negative seven. What does that mean? This function has zero. Rational zeros has none. There is no rational number, no fraction you can plug in here and get zero. Okay, another example. We've got some polynomial here. I called it capital P of X. I just want to list all the possible rational roots. We're not going to check them all right here, but let's list them all out. So my little p, my little q, factors of p. So what goes into negative 12? We've got one. Remember, we also have to list all our pluses and minuses. Two, 
three, four, six, and 12. Factors of Q, the leading coefficient. What goes into four? We've got one, two, and four. So now I want to list out every possible fraction, all fractions, and there's going to be a lot, all fractions that have factors of P over factors of Q. And we're going to get a lot of repeat. So we're not going to bother listing out all the repeats. So order doesn't really matter here. Here would be our list. So one over one. One over two. Don't forget all your pluses and minuses. One over four. Two over one. So plus or minus 2 over 1. 2 over 2, that's just 1. We've already listed that. 2 over 4, that's a half. We've already done that. 3 over 1. 3 over 2, we have not done any 3 halves. 3 over 4, that's new. We haven't listed those yet. 4 over 1, we don't have that. 4 over 2 is just 2. We've already got that. 4 over 4 is just 1. We've already got that. 6 over 1. 6 over 2 is 3. We've already got all our 3s. 6 over 4 is 3 halves. We've already got those. 12 over 1. 12 over 2 is 6. Done it. 12 over 4 is 3. We've done it. So then what we would do in, in practice is start trying these. It's possible. Always keep this in mind. It's possible out of this giant list, none of these work. I just made up a polynomial. In all likelihood, none of them work. But if we were doing a problem in this class, in a pre-calculus class, at least three of these would, in, would work because we would divide each one of those out one at a time until we reduced our quotient down to a quadratic, and then we'd use quadratic formula to find the last two. So we would start with one, negative one, and then so forth. We'd start with the easier ones and work our way up to the harder ones. And that's a good place to stop.